Hi everyone, my name is Alex Raniere. I'm the Artistic Director of the Brisbane Music Festival. You're watching the 26th episode in our Meet the Creative Team interview series that runs concurrently with the 2021 festival. Today we have a Zoom room uh, that on my end is in Brisbane, uh, on the other end is in Berlin, uh, and I'm chatting with my friend Leonardo Silva, who is the composer of a wonderful uh, new work, a new set of preludes for solo piano, which I'm very pleased to be giving the world premiere performance of in a concert called The Lark Ascending, happening this Sunday, the 25th of July. Thanks, Leonardo, so much for your, your time. Thank you very much. Pleasure talking to you, working with you. I would love to start by asking you to share a little bit about yourself and your your career with our audience. Um, it's a long story. Try to make it as short as possible. I come from Brazil and music came very, very late for me. Um, maybe the most important points about my formation I was born in 89, and the first time I actually listened to classical music at all was 2008, when uh, an orchestra, a new orchestra was created in my city, in Belo Horizonte, and I was instantly um, interested in, in the sound, in, in this, this magic world, and I decided immediately to try to understand how it works. And, and the way I found, or the solution I found was to start studying piano and also start writing things. So I ended up starting doing contra um, counterpoint lessons. And from there, I came into composition, probably 2009. And the interesting thing is that back then I was studying engineering. So I had just started my, my studies, um, just for engineering. So I did it from 2008 until 2013. And I just tried to study as much music as I could um, at the same time. And obviously it was not too much, but I, I tried as much as I could. And then the big change came in 2013 when I finished my, my studies as an engineer. I got my diploma and I gave up entirely and decided to move to Germany to try to be a musician. And then I did a master's in composition directly in Zurich with Isabel Mundri. And I've been living in Berlin since 2017. And since last year, I've been also studying again in Leipzig with Klaus Stefan Mankopf. And that's where I find myself right now in Berlin, but studying in Leipzig. Cool. And so is, is that study kind of primarily online or do you travel? Um, well, unfortunately, most of the lessons have been online, which was also, I could also take a see it from the positive side, which means um, I've done many courses, not only in Leipzig, but also in Austria, Switzerland, and everywhere in Germany as a guest. Mm. Um, and not only music, but also things which I, which I love, for, for example, as philosophy. And, but the lessons in Leipzig, they were most, and most of them were online, except one or two, which were in, in presence. And which is also not a problem because it takes one and a half hour from Berlin to Leipzig. So I was going and coming back twice, three times a week. Right. And it just works fine. Cool. Well, I, um, I guess for, for viewers, a bit of a context to this piece. Do you remember the year that, that we were at the um, Impulse Academy? Was it I think it was 2015. Oh, that's a long time ago. Okay, so for <laughs> uh, the idea for this new piano piece, I think started in a coffee shop um, in in Graz when uh, I, I was playing a, a voice and piano piece of yours in this uh, Impulse Academy um, festival, uh, which is where you and I met. Um, and I, 
I remember uh, it wasn't necessarily for a purpose then. I just kind of threw out the idea to you of, of writing a, a piano piece for me at some point. And what, like six years later, and uh, <laughs> here we are finally. Um, so I'm super happy that it's uh, finally happening. Um, I would love for, for, for our viewers that maybe are not familiar with, with your work, if you had to maybe describe your music, um, uh, what, what could people maybe expect to hear from these preludes? Um, this, is, this is generally a difficult question yeah. and I, I, I could answer it in many ways, but spontaneously it comes to my mind a, a really short story which happened in, in, in Impuls as well in Graz. Um, I, had a, I had a master class with a composer and I showed him a piece um, for, for percussion, a piece which um, I'm, I'm quite happy about this piece. And, and it's, it's for two percussionists and a lot of instruments, right? So instead of focusing on just one instrument and exploring all the sounds, it's a huge set mm. of percussion instruments. And because, I mean, due to the fact that this, this composer with whom I was having um, lessons, has interested in the opposite aspect. So exploring every possible sounds from, a, from, a, from a, one single instrument, mm. he made this as a critique, but it sounds, it sounds nice. And it's actually positive in the end, if you think about it. I mean, it's not, it's not about positive or negative, mm -hmm. but he said that um, the piece felt as if, and he was being also metaphorical, the piece felt as if God was touching with his fingers, very gentle, every instrument and every instrument would sound a little bit like this, a little bit like that. Right. And he, he, he meant it in a way as, as, a, as a critique, I mean, not negative, but because of the fact that he's interested in, in, in the other way around. But this was a beautiful metaphor for me at the end, which remains inside me because I'm very interested in this physical aspect about sound and also about things being delicate. Mm. And I think in general, I could say um, my music has a sort of a natural state, which I would describe as a slow, slow paced music, generally speaking, mm. and also reduced in dynamics, which means that whenever my music gets faster or louder, I am just thinking as a contrast or thinking as the opposite of this sort of natural state, which mm. I which now I understand better um, when I think about the music. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, uh, I definitely, as um, a, a player of these pieces, you know, I definitely agree that I think the universe exists mostly in that really interesting space between like kind of piano and triple, triple pianissimo. So there's lots of colors in that softer spectrum. Yeah. And slower spectrum as well. Um, from, uh, oh, I'm also interested myself, but I guess for, for listeners as well, um, who are some of your kind of, uh, I guess, influences as a composer? Who are some composers music that you always kind of turn to for inspiration or ideas or? Um not only composers, but I'm also very interested in, in mostly everything, literature, film, poetry, yeah. etc. But inside the musical world, also because of my formation, um, the first composers I knew were contemporary composers. So I got to know them before Beethoven, Mozart, and, and so on. Mm. So my first influences are just a couple names that come to my mind, for example, Pierre Boulez, which was also an incredible conductor and musical figure in, in the world. 
also Matthias Pincher, which is a German composer, um, Helmut Lahemann, um, which was also a teacher of Matthias Pincher, mm. um, Salvatore Charino, um, Rebecca Saunders, which also played the music in the festival. Mm -hmm. um, those are some of the composers nowadays that I'm, um, or that I have been interested. But also, I mean, and especially now, which I'm going backwards in the history of music, so to say, and studying much more Beethoven or Mozart than before, I've been very interested in the music of Schumann, for example. Yeah. Or, or Mozart, string quartets, and so on and so forth. Um, I think you have some Bach on your piano behind you. Am I seeing that correctly? Well, the, exactly. This is the um, his chorus, Kohan. And, um, I try to play them uh, prima vista every morning. Yeah. Because it's, I mean, the, almost everything in harmony is, is inside those, those chorus, you know? Yeah. And it just, it just, it's just a nice way of beginning um, your day playing one, two, three um, <laughs> chorus. A, Sorry? It's a nice thing to do. It's a nice, uh, it's like more. Yeah, just, just a way of beginning, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, and so you've composed a set of preludes. Uh, what, what was your what like why preludes what was the attraction to the kind of the small small form um the preludes came after i actually stopped composing for quite some time more than a year maybe 14 months i don't know and although i had in my mind this is commission and an idea for a piano piece hmm. um and and in this sense, a prelude is, in a way, uh, a nice way to begin things again, right? Um, mm. Prelude is something that comes before something larger or whatever. So there is this, this biographical aspect. But not only that, um, as it's written in the, in the program text, preludes are usually short pieces um, with a leading or opening character to something else um, originally to establish uh, a key a mode or tonic or to open a larger work but the idea for for those preludes were to serve its own purposes so every every small gesture or every gesture which is connected to something else or every block of sound or every that was a figure um, invites um, the listener to listen carefully to this to this gesture or to this passage. Um, and in this in the sense, every prelude focuses on a, on a type of gesture or on a type of sound or, or harmony. And in the end, it's just an invitation. Hmm. An invitation to listen. I like that. An invitation to listen and not necessarily to go somewhere um, because it remains open, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, uh, I, I'm really, I'm looking forward to sharing. I mean, I think often when people think of kind of prelude and the original meaning for it, I mean, uh, it, like many of Bach's preludes from the well-tempered clavier, some of them are long, you know, they're, they're, they're not short form. They're really, uh, substantial and you know, independent pieces you think about like Chopin, Debussy, uh, who's the other important prelude composer? Messiaen has really beautiful preludes. There you go. Uh, yes, yeah. I mean that none, very few of them are um, uh, actual kind of, I mean the Chopin preludes are perhaps the closest to the miniature kind of truth. Uh, but even then, some of the Chopin preludes are really extended, and there's a lot of content. So it's, I think it's a, it's a curious form. For I mean, uh, in a way, it kind of doesn't mean anything very specific at, at all. But it also is a nice framework for uh, 
brevity and you know it, it sets up the expectation for a certain duration i think it's nice it's great i'm, I'm really looking forward to to sharing your preludes with yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm also very, very happy um, that it's finally taken place. Yes. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, I, I think it's a nice place to, to wrap up the interview, but thank you so much for your, your time and for sharing all of that with the audience and for people that are tuning in that are curious to hear Leonardo's new work. Uh, I am giving the premiere of that on July the 25th in a show called The Lark Ascending. And you can grab your tickets via brizmusicfestival.com, which is linked in the comments. So thanks everyone for tuning in and thanks, Leonardo. Thank you very much. Looking forward. <laughs> See ya.